All right, so rather than jumping over to the other paint or whatever that's gonna be, I kinda of wanna show you how to make your own hard surface stamps if you if you want. There's a, there's a big library in uh, Substance Painter under hard surfaces. Got all these to, to play with, but the likelihood that you're gonna have everything you need all the time from this, this menu here is pretty low. So I wanna show you how to go about making your very own it's pretty easy if you if you have a little bit of uh, Maya under your belt. So this is the geometry that I have made to simulate what's going on here. And I'm looking at it down the front view of the camera. So if I tap the three key, you can see once it gets the subdivision, how it's going to look. And that's close enough, right? It's not, not perfect, but you know, whatever. Um, it'll get the job done here. And there's some important things to mention, which is that it's there's a flat plane here, and the feature lifts directly up out of the flat plane. So when I smooth it, it just it's a very very clean transition out of what is otherwise a flat plane. And the normal map is only going to catch relative differences in height. So this has got to be just kind of floating above, right? And it's going to work out just fine. So this is what the low poly looks like. It's just a plane and it's been rotated 90 degrees so it's also pointing in the right direction. I think the default value is basically just going to come in pointing straight up. So this is our high and this is our low. I've already exported the low. The naming convention here should look familiar, although because there's only one high and one low, it's not really necessary. You could you could skip the, the naming convention part. But uh, what I need to do is tap the one key to go back to my, my regular view, select the geometry. I'm going to go to mesh and then smooth. And I like to keep the sharp edges and corners clicked, and that way it'll preserve the corners so you won't get any weirdness going on in this area when you do your bake. And then all this stuff, I don't know, I guess I've got preserve edges turned on, although I'm not even sure if that's going to make much difference. And I hit apply, and you can see the result there very nice. I have this little node in my history where I can go into my divisions and reduce the number of divisions or increase the number of divisions. I can set it to zero and delete history and it'll go away. So it's a fairly useful feature. Uh, again, it's, it's non-destructive, so that's kind of awesome. And I've already exported my vent high as well. So let's hop over to Painter where I have my vent low handily already imported. We're gonna go to texture set settings, bake mesh maps, uh, 512 is totally fine. All I need here is the normal map. You can see that's all we've got access to down here. That's all we're recreating. So I'll go ahead and add in vent high and I'm going to leave uh, the, we'll set the anti-aliasing anti to two, leave match to always. Again, there's only two, it doesn't matter. You get the exact same result if you pick either one of these, these options here. So I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and uh, bake selected textures. And what you can see here is it's getting kind of chopped right there. And the reason it's getting chopped is because I need to push my, uh, my frontal distance out a little bit. And now I get the whole thing. So here is our normal map. So now I've got to get it out of Painter. So what I'm going to do is go to File, Export Textures, Output Templates. I just need to make a new template. It's very simple. I've actually already got one right here. And I'll just recreate it so you know how it works. So you just uh, I'll hit uh, Subtract there. I'm going to hit Plus. Making your own template. It, you'll have to, I mean, it's super common in this case, it's probably overkill, but again, not a bad thing for you to know how to do. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, so I'm, I've named my my output template NML because I'm going to be exporting the normal map. I'm going to go to RGB, and I'm going to grab this uh, Direct X normal. And again, the only difference between Direct X and OpenGL is the green channel is inverted. So if for some reason you spit out the OpenGL and you can't just come back in, change this, and re-export it. Then uh, you can just go into Maya, I mean, sorry, Photoshop, grab the green channel, invert it, save it, and you should be good to go. And again, all I did is I clicked it here, I did a click and a drag, and then you say from uh, the RGB channels, and there you go. So it's going to do it as a PNG, it's going to be 8 bits, whatever. Target's probably a little bit better. Doesn't really matter though. Um, okay, so, and what I'm also going to do here, even though in this case it doesn't matter at all, is if you say, well, it matters a little. Let's change a second. Uh, dollar texture set underscore n. 
So what this is going to do is whatever the material name is, is it's going to replace this with the material name. So if this if I named it vent, it would be vent underscore n. So we'll go ahead and go to settings, and I'm going to select my NML, and I'm going to tell it to go ahead and put it here. And we can export should be done. And what we'll see when we go to that folder is it is now called Lambert1 underscore n. So that's not really exactly what I want to go for, Lambert1. So I'm going to go to, I mean that's what I exported it, the material out of Maya, so that's just what it took, but you can update that if you go to your texture set list. Where is that? Here we are. And I think you can update it. Settings. Nah, you can't. Alright, whatever. Actually, you just double click it. There we go. So if I just come over here and say vent, whoops, that's an interesting way to spell vent. Try that again. And now if I go to File, Export Textures, NML, let it export, and we hop over, we can see. We very helpfully have a new texture called Vent. So I'm going to open up my, we can go ahead and say thank you very much. We'll open up our little uh, gun project here. And I will go to import resources click Add Resources, select our event. I'm going to be importing this as a texture. I'll import it into the current project. And there you can see it's ready for use. So uh, let's go ahead and we don't need you anymore. Texture set settings also probably don't need you. So I'm going to add a paint layer here and move it into my enamel orange area even though it doesn't necessarily need to be there. We may want to put some of these vents someplace else. I'm going to go ahead and turn everything off except normal. I'm going to get rid of my alpha. I'm going to grab the vent and drag it into normal. And we'll go ahead and scroll up a little bit in the properties window for the brush. And you can see how it's going to look there. I'm going to give it a little bit of spacing. That's probably too much spacing. And uh, the other thing I'm going to want to do is figure out how to orient this so that's going because this thing, even if I look at it from the side view with perspective turned off, which you can easily do, if I can just remember I think it's this. Actually, it might be, let me scoot this over a little bit. Yeah, uh, orthographic, there we go. Okay, so it's gonna be control and uh, left mouse button. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be a little bit picky about exactly how it's gonna let me apply this. And I'm not even sure I'm gonna leave it there Maybe just like one. Something. Anyway, I just wanted to show you how to do that just in case you find yourselves feeling like you need to add a custom made hard surface stamp to your project. Um, I think I'm probably gonna let this one go having run through the demo. Um, you never know, maybe it'll look cool over here or something. Need to pop it out of that layer to have to show up. Or maybe a, as a much smaller feature, you know, whatever, someplace else, but it'll, it'll be cool. So we'll keep it around, but uh, in the next video, we'll actually go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the paint color here for this back area.